Um, I mean, is is what we're experiencing now chaos? Your book is is called an antidote to chaos. What, mm -hmm. what is the chaos? Well, I think the chaos is the uncertainty that so many people feel about the meaning of life and about their position in the world. That that's fundamentally what I was aiming at, and what I'm trying to do in my online lectures and with my book is to provide people with a guideline to meaning. So one of the points that I make in my lectures, for example, is that we actually have a biological instinct for meaning that orients us in the world. And that instinct manifests itself when we place ourselves in a position in the world where we're competent, where what we're doing is working so that we're not too terrified and anxious, but also while we're simultaneously advancing ourselves and improving our ability to cope with the world. So for example, if you watch an athlete, a high level athlete, who's at the peak of his or her performance, you see someone who's extraordinarily practiced at what they're doing and has developed the expertise necessary to do it. But then you also see them push themselves on that developmental edge to make themselves just that much better. And that, that function is associated with an intrinsic sense of meaning. And whenever you see anyone manifest that, you, you are automatically drawn to it. You, you see that when an actor pushes him or herself beyond their limits. You see that when someone speaks extemporaneously and manages it extraordinarily well. And I'm trying to help people understand that this, this meaning is a true phenomenon. It's not a secondary thing. And also to point out that most of the time that meaning is associated with the adoption of responsibility, so, which is also something that people don't understand. But, but, but part of the chaos is that the rules are so uh, hard to see. The, 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 there aren't that obvious rules anymore. Well, part of the chaos is that we, we're transforming our landscape socially, culturally, technologically so rapidly that it's hard for people to gain footing. And so it destabilizes us. Is this the so, world you recognize? Isn't the real problem that quite a lot of men and also young men are struggling to deal with the fact that women now are more in control of their lives than earlier? I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is, is that the idea that um, the West is a patriarchal tyranny is rapidly translated into the idea that young men who strive forward are to be regarded with suspicion because they're doing nothing but manifesting the same sort of tyrannical power that has kept women oppressed for the last 2,000 years. And I think that entire narrative is appalling right to the core. So, and I don't see that it's helpful to anyone because making young men weak or, or, a lot, or, or failing to encourage them to be strong, that's a better way of putting it, certainly does the young men no good and it doesn't do the young women any good at all if they want to find a partner. So you're saying that all along <laughs> women and men have had the same opportunities, always? No, no, I'm basically saying that all along hardly anyone had any opportunities. I mean, if you look at the history of the world, um, things really started to shift in about 1895, but before 1895, the typical person in the West lived on less than a dollar a day in today's money, which is about two thirds the UN cutoff for abject poverty by today's standards. And so what happened through most of the history of the world is that men and women struggled mightily together, sometimes at each other's throats, but mostly cooperatively, to keep the wolf from the door and the tyrant at bay. Life was very, 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 very difficult. And the fact that we survived it all meant that fundamentally we cooperated despite the fact that we're rife with stupidity, but, ignorance and malevolence. But what's so terrifying with gender equality? Nothing. Except when people gerrymander the data. It's like, what do you mean by equality? Do you want women to have their free choice or not? If you do, they're not going to pick occupations that are the same as the occupations men pick. But we have structures today that, that women need to struggle. They need to... to uh, take a step uh, to uh, to have the possibility to become like a prime minister as we talked before we don't have had any prime minister in Sweden that have been a woman for instance uh, we have a lower rate of uh, female entrepreneurs uh, mm -hmm. uh, men had a higher income than women uh, in Sweden uh, even if they work with the same uh, tasks and we uh, need that, to work that, with that's one that we I need to work dispute. with gender equality I think even in the lower class in schools to learn kids how to uh, play with dolls or how to 
boys are... <laughs> we, we need to, I think we need to learn boys to be more sensitive, but also uh, young girls to become more self-confident. And I think that's very important to... Well, the problem, the problem safety. with that, the problem with that is the data indicate that the consequence of the policies that you're promoting have maximized the differences between men and women. So that isn't what it's doing. Now, that isn't to say that the movement towards egalitarianism is necessarily a bad thing, but tremendous amount of that's been driven not by social policy, but by technology. I mean, you know, the narrative that we're fed now is that up until 1960, when the enlightened feminists uh, developed their egalitarian doctrines, m men had kept women down and they finally rose. And the truth of the matter is, is that from about 1895 onward, there was a series of technological revolutions that were extraordinarily powerful in their impact that allowed women to step forward free of many of the burdens that had kept them back in the past. Birth control being one of them, but only, only, only one. Um, uh, uh, sanitary facilities of all sorts, plumbing had a huge role to play, tampons had a huge role to play, as did sanitary napkins. All of these technologies developed that enabled women to, uh, to, to, to move forward to move forward with, with, with less biological impediments, so, so let's say. So what, what, what would you say is the best period in history to be both a man and a woman? Oh, clearly now. There's no, absolutely no doubt about that. You, Anyone who would like to go back... you worry for the chaos? You, you worry about the chaos? Well, you know, it's nice if we could make things better than they are. And I would say that just as all around the world, we're raising living standards at a rate that is absolutely unparalleled in human history. We're also in danger of destabilizing our culture in the West.